Good morning, boys and girls. This is Miss Nancy coming to you from the Upper Chichester Library in Upper Chichester, Pennsylvania. And I hope you're all ready for story time this Monday morning and that you had a really pleasant Easter weekend with your family and friends. And I do hope the Easter Bunny came to visit you. Today, I want to start off with a story about a young woman, or a young girl actually, who wanted to just help. That's the name of the book. It's called Just Help. And it was written by Sota Mayor, who is one of the Supreme Court Justices in the Supreme Court of the United States. It's illustrated by her friend, Angela Domenquez. And actually, the title is, has just a little more to it. It's Just Help and How to Build a Better World. Each day when Sonia woke up, her mother asked her a question. How will you help today? Mamie was a nurse who helped people at a hospital every day, and Sonia wanted to help too. So each morning, Sonia set about to have a good answer for Mamie's question. One morning, Sonia knew just how she was going to help that day. She filled two shopping bags with candy bars, warm socks, nice soaps, sunglasses, pens, and notebooks. When Sonia boarded the school bus, the driver helped her carry her bags up the steps. What's all this? she asked Sonia. We're sending care packages to American soldiers overseas, Sonia said. And that is a school project that happens more often than you might realize. When Sonia got on the bus, not one seat was free. She did not know what to do. Then Booker and Skye waved her over. You can sit with us, they said, squeezing together to make room for Sonia. Thank you, Sonia said. At school, Booker, Skye, and Sonia emptied their bags onto a table in the gym. Many kids had shown up to help. For this service project, the kids sorted and packed the treats in boxes that postal workers would pick up later in the day. Kylie was extra happy to help. Her mother was a soldier in the Army, and she was stationed far away. Kylie missed her every day, but it made her smile to think of her mother opening one of the care packages sent by her friends. Brooklyn loved underwater animals. She was upset to learn that plastic bags humans dumped into the oceans made the sea turtles sick. When she read about a worldwide campaign to save the sea turtles, Brooklyn joined in to help. She started a recycling program at school just for plastic bags. After the service project in the gym, she had a lot more bags to add to the recycling bins. You see the recycling sign? That's a sign that you see on bins in many places, department stores, sometimes on the streets, and it means what you put in there are things that can be recycled, like plastic, glass, and aluminum. After school, Gabriella and her brother Lucas went to the playground. There was trash everywhere. Gabriella thought about the recycling bins. Let's make today a park cleanup day, Gabriella suggested to the other kids. They all agreed to help. Afterward, Lucas took a piece of chalk and wrote in big letters on the ground, Keep our park clean. Please do not litter. See, this is where he wrote it, right on the ground. And actually, um, this this uh, Saturday, and uh, next Saturday, I believe it's the 22nd, um, it is considered Earth Day. And a lot of neighborhoods have uh, cleanups, you know, to pick up all the trash that has been left behind and recycle it or throw it into the trash. When Jasper got home, he saw that his room was a mess, just like the park had been. 
As he cleaned up, he found brand new toys that he had never even used. Jasper decided to donate them to the children's hospital. Jasper remembered that when he was a patient there, he always felt better when the nurses brought him to the playroom. He wanted to help kids who were there now. He brought the new toys next door to Maya because her dad worked as a janitor at the hospital and he could take the, co the toys to the playroom there. Jasper's kindness reminded Maya that she had some, something special to give away too. She picked out her favorite shirt from her clothing drawer. Maya loved it, but she knew someone who would love it even more, especially today, her good friend, Simone. Simone stood on the street corner with her dad and her brother, Miles. It was election day, and they were campaigning for their favorite candidate for city council, who promised to build more school schools and playgrounds for the children. When Maya gave Simone the shirt, Simone was thrilled. It's just like a sparkly American flag. Thank you so much, Simone said and she put, on, put it on over the shirt she was wearing. Simone and Miles were handing out flyers to everyone who passed by, including Samir and his mom. Mommy, it's election day. Did you vote yet? Samir asked. No, I forgot, his mom said. Well, let's go vote, Samir said. My teacher said, your vote is your voice in the community. Samir wanted his mom to use her voice and vote. The voting booths were set up in the senior center. As Samir and his mother waited to vote, they saw Kunal pushing John in a wheelchair. Kunal was there to help John vote. John lived alone, and twice a week, Kunal spent the afternoon at the senior center visiting John and sharing snacks. You see these voting booths? The school that I taught in when I taught in New Hampshire, the gymnasium was turned into the place for people to vote every time there was an election, either national or statewide. I remember seeing these kind of booths there. Promise me when you're 18 you will vote, John said, as he stuck his I voted sticker on Colonel's shirt. When I was young, I was part of a great struggle to get the right to vote. Now I never miss a chance to vote. I promise, Connell said. Later that evening, Sonia climbed into bed and her mother asked her, Sonia, how did you help today? Sonia thought about the service project for the soldiers, recycling the plastic bags, cleaning up the playground, and voting with Mamie but she also remembered the bus driver who brought her to school safely, the postal workers who delivered the packages to the soldiers, the poll workers who guided voters, and her friends who helped in big and small ways. We all helped each other today, Sonia said. As Sonia closed her eyes, she imagined that everything she did was like the yarn in the blanket her grandmother had made for her. It tied Sonia to everyone around her, even people she did not know, each one inspiring the next, knitting together a community that was safer, cleaner, wiser, healthier, and kinder. Like Sonia, her friends and her neighbors, when we all do our part, we all can have a good answer to Mamie's question, how will you help today? And you know, there's many ways you can help. You can help your, your mom by picking up your toys. You can help people, you can help your school teacher if you go to preschool, which probably many of you do, by helping her put away the toys and helping to clean up any messes that have been left behind. All those things are help, helpful to the adults in your life as well as to your friends. Now, the next story I'm going to read 
It's called Library Mouse. And I think, actually, I think libraries are very important, and I hope that you will come and visit our library when you have a chance and borrow some books and take them home to read with your mom or your dad or your sister or brother. Now, this is called Library Mouse, A Friend's Tale, and it's by Daniel Kirk. Samuel was a library mouse. He lived in a little hole in the wall behind the children's reference books. Sam loved to read, and he loved to write, too. Everyone loved his little books. But Sam was very shy, and no one at the library had ever met him. Once a week, the children at the library met for a writers and illustrators club. Our next project, said Mrs. Forrester, the librarian, I would like all of the boys and girls to work with a partner. One of you will be the author and the other will be the illustrator. You will find out how teamwork can make a great book. At the end of the meeting, there was one child left standing by himself. Don't worry, Tom, said Mrs. Forrester. I would be happy to work with you and be your partner. When night came, Sam, the library mouse, went to do some research for a story he was planning to write. All night long he studied, jotting down things in his notebook. But as the sun rose, his eyelids grew heavy and he fell asleep. Squeak! Sam awoke with a start as the children filed into the room. In his hurry to escape, he left his little notebook behind. Tom discovered it on the library's desk. Carefully, he opened the cover and turned the pages. Then he went to tug at Mrs. Forrester's sleeve. What's this, said the librarian, flipping through the notebook. From the titles of the stories in here, I would guess this belongs to Sam our mystery author. He's written so many books, and yet we've never had the pleasure of meeting him. Let's put it back on your desk, said Tom, so Sam will find it. And here are the little books the mouse is supposed to have written. Now we know that this is an imaginary mouse doing magic things, but it's kind of fun to read about anyway. One of his books was titled The Lonely Cheese. This one's called Squeak, A Mouse's Life, The Mystery, of Mouse Mansion. That night, Sam climbed onto the librarian's desk to look for his notebook. As he hurried back across the desk with his prize in his arms, the mouse stepped across an ink pad and left behind a trail of footprints. Now let's see, can you see the footprints are kind of like in the center of the book here? There they go. There he's walking. And here was the ink pad. was right over here, right at the bottom of the page, where my fingers are. Oh, he left a good trail. Good morning, Mrs. Forrester said to Tom when he arrived early the next day. Did you bring some ideas for a story we can work on together? Not yet, said Tom. Then he noticed the inky marks on the librarian's desk and saw that Sam's notebook was gone. Impossible, he thought. When he was sure that no one was looking, Tom got down on his hands and knees, and he peered beneath the library shelves and around the baseboards, not quite certain what he was looking for. Suddenly, he saw a little hole in the wall. Now he knew why Sam always seemed to write about mice. Tom tore a piece of cheese from the snack he had brought, and he left it by the opening. Oh, no, Sam cried when he stepped out of his hole that night and saw the cheese. Who could have left it, he wondered. What do they want? Sam thought it might be best to leave the cheese alone and pretend that he had never seen it. That is a cute picture of Sam, I think. <laughs> 
The next time Tom came to the library, he found the cheese looking dry and lonely, just where he had left it. He replaced it with a peanut butter cracker, because most mice cannot resist peanut butter. Maybe Sam will like this better, he thought. Indeed, when Sam awoke and smelled the cracker, it was all he could do not to gobble up the treat. Clearly, someone had discovered his hole. Sam hoped that if he ignored the food, whoever it was would go away and forget all about him. But Tom did not forget about Sam. He thought about writing a letter to the library mouse, but he wasn't sure what to say. Then he got an idea. He sat down and started to write a story. It was called The Shy One, and this is how it began. Once upon a time, there was someone who was very, very shy. His name was Sam. People seemed to make him nervous. The children at the library knew what Sam was like because of the books that he wrote. But nobody really knew who Sam was, and that seemed to suit him just fine. Until one day, when he finished writing, Tom folded up the paper and left it just outside the little hole in the wall. That night, Sam read the story from beginning to end. Tom had discovered the one thing Sam could not resist, a story. Sam grinned. He remembered Tom as a regular at the library. I've got an idea, he said to himself. Then he went into his hole and got to work. Looks like he's doing a lot of writing over here. When Tom arrived later that week for Writers and Illustrators Club, he felt a little guilty. He'd been so busy thinking about Sam that he had forgotten to do his assignment. He got down on his hands and knees to look beneath the reference books. The paper that he had left there was gone. Then he heard the librarian's voice. Tom, what's this I found on my desk? I thought you'd decided not to work on a book this week, and then I found the shy one, written by you and illustrated by Sam. I can't wait to share it with the group, she said. Oh, no, thought Tom. The story he had written had been meant just for Sam to see. What if Sam had drawn a boy and a mouse? If Mrs. Forrester read it out loud, everyone would find out who Sam really was. And then what? Someone might try to hurt him or chase him away. Please don't read the story, Mrs. Forrester, Tom pleaded. You should be proud of your work, the library said kindly. And how wonderful that you did a book together. I can't wait to hear more about who Sam really is. And there's the little book that, that he started, Tom started and Sam finished. When everyone was seated, Mrs. Forrester held up the little book, and she began to read. Once upon a time, there was someone who was very shy. His name was Sam. People seemed to make him nervous. The children at the library knew what Sam was like because of the books he wrote. But nobody really knew who Sam was, and that seemed to suit him just fine. Until one day, someone discovered Sam's secret. It was a good thing he only wanted to be Sam's friend. Mrs. Forrester read the story from beginning to end, and Tom was amazed to see that the pictures that Sam had drawn, the, illustrator, uh, the illustrations showed two mice instead of one, and one of them was named Tom. And this says, come on, Sam said to Tom, let's do it together. And they did. Oh, no, answered Tom with a shy smile. I just wrote the story. Sam is real, but he likes his privacy. So that's all I'm going to say. A friend knows how to keep a secret. When the library was ready to close and Tom was sure that no one was watching, he bent to place something on the floor 
beneath the children's reference books. Sam awoke that night to find a note outside his home, and it says, Thanks, partner. Great work. Your friend, Tom. Sam sat down at his desk. He had an idea for his own story about friends. He couldn't wait for Tom to read it, and maybe this time his new friend would draw the pictures. So I just thought that was really a cute story about a library mouse. Now, we don't have a library mouse here at our library, but I hope you will come and enjoy some of these books that we have here that we can certainly share with all of you. Now, I have another little story. Now, this is a sort of a bunny story. It's a little animal story. And um, I, I guess I was still thinking in terms of Easter when I picked it out. It's called If You Were My Bunny, and it's by Kate McMullen and illustrated by David McPhail. It's about all these mothers and their little babies. This one says, if you were my bunny and I were your mama, I'd pick you out from all the other bunnies and nestle you beside me. Then you close your little pink eyes and I'd sing you a bunny song. Hush, little cottontail, don't you hop. Mama's going to bring you a carrot top. If that carrot top should wilt, Mama's going to bring you a clover quilt. If that clover quilt, if, if, if that clover is buzzing with a bee, Mama's going to bring you some dandelion tea. If that tea spills on the ground, you'll still be the sweetest little bunny around. If you were my bear cub and I were your mama bear, I'd scoop honey from a hive inside a hollow tree and let you lick it from my paw. Then I'd sniff a storm in the air and race you through the first fat raindrops back to our cave, where I'd nuzzle you and waffle you with a song. Sleep, bear cubs sleep, inside our den so deep. Through the boom and rumble thunderstorm, I'll always keep you dry and warm, full of honey, safe from harm. Sleep, bear cub, sleep. I think that's a dear picture of the bear with her cub. If you were my kitten and I were your mama cat, I'd pick you up by the scruff of your neck and carry you home to bed. Then I'd wash you all over with my rough pink tongue and purr you a catnap song. Dream time, my kitten. Hush now, be nice. Lap some dream cream and stalk some dream mice. Soar through the air, chasing birds on the wing. Dream time, my kitten. Dream time, I sing. If you were my duckling and I were your mama duck, I'd paddle toward the shore at sunset and you'd follow right behind. Then I'd tuck you into a nest lined with my softest feathers and quack you a nighttime tune. Dearest duckling, close your eyes. Crickets chirp your lullabies. Daddy duck is swimming near. Turtles, you need never fear. Go to sleep, my downy one. Moon is shining. Day is done. If you were my puppy and I were your mama dog, I'd nudge you through the doghouse door with my cold, wet nose. You'd flop down beside me on the doghouse floor, and I would croon you a puppy lullaby. Go to sleep, little pup. Stop your wiggling and squirming. No more yapping, no more yips, no more snapping, no more nips. Snuggle close, puppy dear. In the still of the starlight, snuggle close. I am here, sweetest puppy, sleep tight. 
If you were my baby and I were your mama, I'd pull the covers up to your chin and give you a great big hug and a great big kiss and say, I love you. And you'd fall fast asleep. Sweet dreams. And this is a picture of the little boy falling asleep with all of his little pet stuffed animals. I just was intrigued with the illustrations in this little book called If You Were My Bunny. So I think that's the rest of the end of the stories for this week. I would like to make a few announcements about classes that we have here at the library. Um, we have these virtual Kids to Go classes. You can join on Facebook. This is, would be for your moms. Join on Facebook for live art classes and crochet tutorials. Uh, you can stop by our library to pick up your free to-go kits for both crocheting and for the art kits. And then Miss Teresa has a program called Art to Go. It's at 11 a.m. Uh, April 23rd. That's this coming Saturday. And then May 7th and May 21st. Then there's crocheting along with Hannah, and that's on Fridays at 11 a.m. on Facebook. And again, you can catch, you can make marshmallow bunnies on April the 22nd, May 6th, it's going to be a spring wreath, and on May 20th, there's flower decor. And I've seen some of the crochet that she's been doing, and they, they look great. I'm sure you will enjoy making them. And you can stop here and get all the materials that you would need. Then also to remind you, uh, we're having Tuesday morning cafes over at the Memorial Presbyterian Church. The Upper Chichester Library and the church are partnering with, in this cafe. And um, the next one will be on the 19th, which will be tomorrow and then May the 3rd and May the 13th, 9.30 to 12 p.m. Uh, the mornings, Mr. Uh, Andrew will be there, and there will be some guest speakers who will be coming. There will be some arts and crafts, and there will be refreshments. And all of this is, is free and open to anyone who lives here in Upper Chai. Uh, bring your friends, and I hope you will investigate it and enjoy it. Again, come to the library. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye for today.